may be a difficult travel situation if you pay attention to the people involved and get into their lives may make the whole trip become interesting and fun again. With this title, Half the Fun is Getting There, please welcome Mr. Jim Ellingson. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests. Do people interest you? Yes. They sure interest me. I'll tell you how a particular, potentially very difficult travel experience was made into a real pleasurable moment by the people involved. For years, I've been, decades actually, I've been taking vacations in Colorado. There's a certain spirit to the Colorado people that I haven't found anywhere else. You know, one of the concepts is that the little guy is important. <clears throat> it's not only the rich and powerful, and there are plenty of millionaires and billionaires with their little or big ranches tucked into the hills, but the, the waitress, the bank teller, the cop, these guys are important too. Now, you'll see as we roll along in this story how that plays out. <clears throat> On this particular trip, I had flown in with my wife Barbara from LAX into the Denver Stapleton Airport. <coughs> the flight was on time, baggage claim was slow, and it's a very long airport. And the, the challenge was that the flight connecting to fly into the western slopes of the Rockies was way at the other end of the airport, and there was very little time. So my assignment was to get to the gate, tell them to hold the plane until Barbara could catch up and we can board. Now they have a people mover, a conveyor that goes from one end of the airport to the other. So I'm on this conveyor and I'm taking these really long strides and I'm polite, I don't push people, but I'm passing pedestrians at a pretty pace here as I press forward. Zoom, zoom. The airport is zooming by me. Eventually, I get to this gate. <clears throat> There's a small line, so I'm standing in a line. And that gave Barbara time to catch up. So she was going to go to the counter and do the talking. So she went up there. <clears throat> and the good news was the flight had not left. The bad news was the flight had been canceled. <laughs> Now, let me take time out and tell you a little bit about Barbara. Her character is such, she is the best friend you could ever have. Susan will tell you this. She, she's a highly trained Scientologist, highly trained uh, counselor, <clears throat> really cares for the people under her charge. However, <clears throat> if she felt you were in the wrong, she felt you had done something counter-survival to get interfere with somebody else's path or that kind of thing. Man, I'll tell you. Zeus could throw lightning bolts. Thor could throw lightning bolts. Well, Barbara could throw lightning bolts too. And the Terminator, you know, the Terminator could focus <laughs> evil energy. She could do that. Now, so she's up there. And the girl at the counter has these vouchers that are worth, I think, 25 bucks or 50 bucks or something to kind of calm, you know, customer accommodation. So she's got this stack of these things, and Barbara is just getting warmed up, and this girl is like <laughs> counting these things off like a Vegas dealer, you know. <laughs> <coughs> and Barbara was like Superman, like uh, Clark Kent ready to take off his jacket, you know. She, she was about to reveal the inner New Yorker, <laughs> uh <-oh>. Yeah. <laughs> so she's just kind of warming up to this thing. And meanwhile, there's a whole bunch of people that need the same circumstance handled, you know. So there's a long line. And there's a guy who shows up in a business suit, very classy suit, shiny shoes, and a really snazzy briefcase. And he sees the line and he just tromps right up to the front to the counter. Right next to Barbara, I was talking to the other lady there. 
slammed his briefcase on the counter, and he said like the Emperor Caesar, do you have any idea who I am? And the lady grabs the speaker and says, we have a gentleman here at gate 18B who doesn't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can help in this identity crisis, please step forward. <laughs> and the guy, his face just got red, and basically he backed off, and he just kind of vanished like a Florida cockroach when you turn on the light. <laughs> <laughs> and just at that time, the phone rang. The lady picks up the phone, and she says, the hailstorm has passed. The flight will be boarding soon. And the, the relief, the laughter, the relief, the, the flight going back on again, it was like, you know, and when, this, when this guy got slammed down about his, uh, doesn't know who he is, Everybody in this whole line heard the whole thing, and everybody was like laughing just hysterically. And the, the experience just brought us all together. And the camaraderie of, of that moment, of that time, see, it was the people that made all the difference. We had action, drama. <laughs> we were having a great time, and we, we hadn't even reached our destination yet. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Sure. Good. Yeah. All righty. Good job. <laughs> Look at that. How about that, man? All right. Yeah. Thank you.